We also need more effective safeguards in place when it comes to the European Union Agency Workers Directive now being transposed into UK law. As the greater use of contract pilots illustrates, this is an issue that affects workers of all kinds, the people who fly the plane as well as the people who clean it. But with contract workers excluded from draft agency worker regulations, the danger is that unscrupulous employers and agencies will be able to use loopholes such as this to their own advantage. And that's why the TUC is currently lobbying ministers hard for a fundamental rethink in this area, alongside the swiftest possible implementation of the new regulations. Europe's just one of the big challenges facing you. Another, of course, is the economy. With the global economy only just beginning to re recover from the biggest crash since the Great Depression, and with Britain still mired in recession, these are tough times for working people. And in a boom and bust industry like yours, the problems can be even more acute. Frankly, you don't have to look hard to find evidence of just how difficult things are. Not just the massive cost-cutting of British Airways with jobs being slashed and even staff asked to forego a month's pay earlier in the year. Not just the collapse of firms such as Excel and Zoom, job losses at BMI Baby, or mergers between the likes of Thomson and First Choice. But the creeping extension of the Ryanair model across the industry, with pilots increasingly expected to foot the bill for their own training, some airlines using cheap and experienced cadets in the right-hand seat, and terms and conditions under attack. Aggressive management often seems to be the order of the day, with firms such as Jet2 and DHL deeply hostile to your attempts to represent members. It doesn't have to be like this. As the example of Southwest Airlines has shown in the States, there is an alternative. Low cost does not have to mean low standards of employment. So together we have to keep pressing for decent work, for respect, dignity and a voice for all pilots. And part of that challenge, of course, is to campaign for policies that will help the airline business to prosper, which takes me on to that hugely important issue of air passenger duty. At a time when the industry is on its knees, the massive rise in APD, which took effect from the first of this month, is surely a huge mistake, a mistake that could adversely impact on the 700,000 UK jobs that depend on aviation. Working with BALPA, the TUC will be lobbying ministers hard for a serious rethink. We know that in Holland, the introduction of a similar tax led to a 10% reduction in passengers, undermining Amsterdam's Schiphol status as a major global hub, which is why the government there ended up reversing its policy. One of your motions to this year's TUC Congress was on this issue of APD and we'll be working with you to take forward its message to government in the weeks and months ahead. And the same can be said, of course, for your other motion on the hugely important issue of safety in the offshore industry in the North Sea, an industry everyone in this country depends on. As we remember the terrible tragedy in April, in which 16 lives were lost when a Bond helicopter ditched off Aberdeen, we need to ensure the highest possible standards of safety in the offshore sector. And that's a process that demands the full involvement of unions. And the TUC will be seeking to advance that vital agenda with both government and industry alike. And indeed, I'm looking forward to visiting Aberdeen myself at BALPA's invitation to find out more about the challenges that you face in the offshore sector. We also stand ready to work with you to address another key safety issue, that of fatigue. As you're acutely aware, in 2012, the European Aviation Safety Agency will be introducing a new working time regime. 
that would water down and undermine existing CAA regulations. This despite 10 to 15 percent of aircraft accidents being caused by fatigue. And we saw so disturbingly in the Colgan Air CRJ crash in the United States. Just as America is tightening up its working time rules in response, the European Union seems to be heading in the opposite direction. And with European airports and skies crowded as never before, that's just plain wrong. As the European Cockpit Association's Day of Action proved last month, there's huge strength of feeling among pilots about this. I know that uh, so well. And their voices, your voices, must be heard. However advanced aircraft may have become, however sophisticated air traffic control may be, what matters most of all to the safety of any flight are the people sitting in the cockpit. Sometimes I fear the travelling public can take what you do for granted, mistaken in their belief that the computerization and automation of aircraft systems somehow has taken away the skill from the pilot's job. But as we saw in the case of US Airways 1549, when things go wrong, what matters is the judgment of the flight crew, making life or death decisions under the most extraordinary circumstances. At barely 3,000 feet and 200 knots, with little height or airspeed to play uh, with, Chesley Sullenberger used his knowledge and experience to save 155 lives. But he isn't just a great pilot as Alpa safety chairman, he's also a committed trade unionist. And just like your colleagues in the United States, the work that you do with BALPA is crucially important, making a difference where it's needed most. When I fly anywhere, I want it to be on an aircraft built by union labor, maintained by union labor, and particularly flown by union labor. So my message today is keep up all of this good work. Keep speaking up for the aviation industry. Keep advancing professional standards and keep winning a better deal for Britain's pilots. And the TUC certainly looks forward to working with you in taking that mission forward in the months and years ahead. Many thanks indeed for the opportunity to address you this morning. Thank you, Ian.